Hello and welcome to You Talking to Me. Europe counts on market forces to protect the climate by trading emission rights, but the system doesn't work the way it should. How can it be changed? And is it the right system anyway? That's what we are going to discuss with our guests from the European Parliament. Mr. Matthias Grote, he's a German Social Democrat. Hello and welcome. Good morning. We are also joined by Matthias Strost from RTV Slovenia. You're a NetPlus member from our radio network. Hello, Matthias. Hello, thanks. Mr. Grote, currently a company can buy a ton of carbon emission at around at less than seven euro. Um, Instead of investing in reducing emissions, this is way too cheap to get uh, into a low carbon industry. So um, obviously, trading emission rights doesn't change anything. Oh, it changes anything because we are reducing the emissions every year. Uh, 1.74 percent reduction is in the system, but our problem is we have. To too many certificates in the system and uh, the reason is, is that we have a construction uh, uh, mistake we did in the in the past and uh, so we have now to correct it. Mm -hmm. uh, experts say that uh, an allowance should uh, cost instead of uh, less than seven euro about 20 euro to have the, the uh, effect we want to go uh, into the direction of a low carbon uh, industry. Do you believe we can never reach that price? Yeah, perhaps we reach a price. Uh, we had several reforms of the emission trading system. Last week we adopted in Strasbourg the market stability reserve. That means that the whole system is now uh, functioning in dynamic, uh, dynamic mode mm -hmm. uh, because you have borders where the price uh, or the, the count of, of certificates is between and uh, a market is function with uh, demand and supply. Mm -hmm. uh, the system has been there since 10 years. Uh, it's uh, rather complicated. We are not going to, into many details no. <laughs> of this uh, system. Um, is it right to let the market rule climate change? Yeah, we have this instrument, only this instrument, and this instrument covers 45% uh, of the emissions in the European Union. And another instrument could be in a taxation system, in CO2 taxation. But you know, uh, in the Council, they're working on the finance transaction tax, and it's impossible to reach an agreement. I can... Yeah, count uh, several members, member states who are against in European tax. And so this is the reason why we should stick to the emission trading system. And we need reforms, clear, because we have an oversupply. Mm -hmm. But it was organized by the council and other forces. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned it. The big problem is the huge surplus of allowances uh, on the market. And to solve this problem, you invented the so-called backloading, Matthias. I didn't invent it. <laughs> <laughs> no, the EU. Up, yeah, up to 900 million allowances are to be temporarily withdrawn from the market from 2014. What makes you think that this isn't just a postponement of the problem? Yeah, well, it's a postponement because uh, this was backloading. And in 2019, we have the market stability reserve. We take the 900 million certificates put it into the reserve, they are completely <coughs> out of the market. And also the uh, uh, oversupply, which is in the market, uh, the non-allocated um, certificates, we put them also into reserve. That means that the 1.5 billion certificates we take from the market. And so we think then it's possible to have an, a functional emission trading system. You mentioned earlier the market stability reserve, a sort of central bank for emission uh, rights. Um, for instance, by taking excessive allowances from the market, what do you expect from this reserve? What, what would be the, the end goal? What I expect is that we have an increase of, of the price. That's clear. And that's also clear for companies and uh, participants in the market. They want to invest that they have stable conditions. Mm -hmm. This is what I expect. Okay, with this uh, system, a range of exceptions, uh, the complicated system we already mentioned, uh, a range of exceptions are foreseen and Poland managed to get some with a deal. And we have jo Joachim Czyczewski from Polski Radio with a question on that. 
Poland has, as you know, one of the most carbon-intensive economies and at the same time is one of the EU countries with a low GDP. In the negotiations on climate targets for 2030, Poland got the right to give free allowances to the energy sector up to 2030. What do you expect to be the consequences of this decision in terms of reducing greenhouse gas emissions? First, I must say it's wrong. Uh, that we give such big uh, exceptions. Uh, we need a transition to a low-carbon economy and coal is not part of a low-carbon economy. It's a completely wrong, wrong decision. And normally we need in the European Union the internalization of external costs. And then you can see uh, coal, uh, coal energy is also a reason for, for uh, low GDP and uh, yeah, a slow development of the economy. So why do do we take these wrong decisions? There's How can a, we? There's a majority in the in the count in the council, and uh, they reach this agreement. An exemption, perhaps, for the domestic uh, politics in in Poland is is it's necessary, but Poland is always climate skeptical. But we cannot wait for the slowest in the European Union. Okay, let's uh, move to Germany, your country, where new ideas came up to influence the market development. So we have Claudia Knopke from MS on the phone. Hi, Claudia. Hi, good morning. Yeah, a German platform, a group of German scientists, they are calling themselves the compensators and they are calling for donations to buy emission allowances in order to give the consumers the opportunity to compensate somehow their potential, their own climate sins. And they want to draw the attention to the problem of climate change, but they also count on the effect to raise the price by withdrawing allowances from the market. So we've heard already somehow it works, uh, but not so good as it could be. So is fighting climate change um, a sort of charity event right now, maybe? It's a really good idea because I like the approach of the compensators. Uh, I made also a video statement to promote uh, this idea. Uh, I had a discussion with, an, with a colleague um, because we received uh, during the backloading proposal one week before from uh, Peter Fox, a German, German uh, artist and, and singer, uh, also a really strong email to support it. And the idea normally could be we know this uh, uh, band eight even in the 80s. Perhaps we need an similar uh, similar event uh, save your climate in Europe and that you pay the entry into the concert with allowances or something else this could be a really good sign if also for young people we need a movement we need pressure pressure on the governments uh, pressure on the parliament that the politicians are moving because climate is not in the top uh, uh, top news but now is, is the industry going to change by those uh... no the industry is Slowing uh, is, is slow. Some, uh, some uh, sectors are, are uh, faster. They are asking for reforms because uh, also it has to do with competitiveness. If you use less energy and you are more productive, you are uh, more competitiveness in the, in the globalized world. Mm -hmm. But I think that the young people are the key. Okay, there are other uh, ways to reach the emission targets, such as investing in projects in the south. And we know that uh, this is uh, very problematic. Uh, we know that farmers in the south uh, <coughs> get themselves uh, deprived from their land. And yet, we give the companies this possibility to buy themselves out. Why do we do that? Why don't we abolish this possibility? It's two-thirds of the problem. Uh, One-third one -third is the economic crisis. And uh, two-thirds are these uh, so-called CDMs, clean development mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And we have to reduce it during the reforms. We expect it from the Commission, the new uh, proposal, and we have really to reduce these things because it's a loophole. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, we were talking about uh, emission trading. Another topic uh, is number one here in Brussels and all over Europe right now. It's uh, Greece. Uh, and we have uh, Savros Samoulidis from Sky Media from mm. Athens. Hello from Athens. So my question is regarding the 50 billion fund for Greece. Um, as it has been regarded as a breach of national sovereignty with even Prime Minister Renzi considering this condition as a really humiliating one for Greece. 
and similar initiatives were already proposed by our European partners in the past and were at the end rejected. So do you really consider this could now prove to be a successful measure for Greece? No, uh, I think that Greece has to do first reforms because nobody knows uh, who is the owner of the land. I have several uh, uh, requests in, in the past that companies, they wanted to invest in Greece and they were not able to invest. In four years it was not possible to install one wind turbine, corruption, but also uh, no knowledge who is the owner of the land. So we can give millions and billions of euros to Greece, uh, but if there are no reforms and structural reforms also in the public administration, no, not one turbine will be installed. But what about this privatization uh, fund? Uh, Sigma Gabriel, uh, when he was here in Brussels a few days ago, he said that it was uh, even a social democrat idea to get this fund uh, proposed. What the do you fund think idea of it? is nice. Uh, it's a nice idea. But the problems in Greece are deeper and it's, they are structural problems. So I had companies, they contacted me because they wanted to invest in Greece and they were not able to invest in Greece. So we need more time. Well, Greece, totally clear. I'm completely in favor that Greece stays in the Eurozone. But uh, we have to now organize the structural reforms. Otherwise, it's not possible to invest there and have also safety for the investment. Yesterday, uh, German finance minister Wolfgang Schäuble came again with his idea of a Grexit. He, he seems to stick to that I idea. I completely disagree and with this idea. What Greece, about... Greece is one part of the European Union and also in the Eurogroup. And we should do everything that they stick in the Euro Eurogroup from both sides. And we should stop these stupid discussions about a time-out Grexit. It's really stupid. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we are at the end of this show. Thank you, Mr. Grote, for joining us. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you all and see you soon on You Talking to Me. 